my dear students welcome you back in my geography class this is the second video on the topic natural vegetation and wildlife in the first part of the video we discussed about the natural vegetation the distribution of natural vegetation and the usefulness of natural vegetation along with wildlife in this video we will understand the factors which are responsible for the loss of natural vegetation and wildlife and the ways by which we can conserve the natural vegetation so let's get started forest is referred as our natural wealth as per the national forest policy the area under the forest cover should be 33% but sadly in our country india the area under the forest cover is far less than 33% it is very important to understand the importance of forest in our life forest provides the natural habitat for the wildlife and also it helps to grow different plants different kinds of plants are grown in the forest which are useful for the human beings forest maintains the ecological balance plants and animals together maintain the ecosystem as we can understand that both plants and animals are very important in the ecosystem are very important in maintaining the ecological balance but we can see that there is a loss in the natural habitat and also in the extinction of the wildlife now what are the reasons for it we will see that due to the loss of natural habitat a large number of wildlife are becoming endangered now what do you mean by endangered endangered mean the condition where the animals that means wildlife or it may be the plants are on the verge of extinction that means the number of the animals are constantly reducing because of change in climate because maybe the loss of habitat and this is leading to the animals to be endangered the numbers of the animals who which are endangered and of the plants are increasing day by day the animals are also becoming extinct extinct means when they are no more there in the environment that means in the earth we cannot trace the wildlife or the plant life because they they are no more available on the earth now let us know about the factors which are leading to the endangered and the extinction of the wild animals and also of the natural vegetation the first factor which are responsible for the process of extinction of natural vegetation and wildlife are deforestation now what is deforestation cutting down of the trees as the trees are cut down it leads to the loss of natural habitat just imagine that if your house is no more available to you then where you will leave the comfort that you leave the comfort with which you can live in your own house if it will not be there what will will be your situation same happens with the animal with the wildlife the as because of the deforestation their natural habitat is lost it leads to soil erosion because the plants bind the soil as there will be no plants there will be no animals there will be no plants then how the soil can be protected so it leads to soil erosion also the process which are responsible for extinction are constructional activities we know that our population is day by day increasing as the population is increasing there is a demand and need for settlements if there will be no settlements no houses where they will live in also they need industries to work in so this is leading to the constructional activity which are again leading to deforestation the next process for the extinction of natural vegetation wildlife are forest fire now forest fire are product of both natural that means both nature and human activities forest fire means an uncontrollable fire which can cause a huge destruction of wildlife and vegetation recently in amazon and australia devastating forest fire caused huge loss of a vegetation and wildlife The next point is tsunami and landslide. Due to tsunami and due to landslide, huge toll of animal and wildlife get destroyed. 
The next factor which is responsible for the process of extension of natural vegetation and wildlife is a climatic change. Due to the increase in the emission of carbon dioxide in the air, it is leading to increasing pollution and also leading to change in temperature. Global warming is a major concern. Now, due to the climatic change, we can see that the breeding and the feeding pattern of the animals are changing. The life cycle of plants and animals are getting affected. Temperature is getting warmer. The rise in temperature is leading to melting of snow in the polar regions. We can also notice that some plants are growing early and blooming in the spring and they are surviving longer into the fall. There are some animals who are waking sooner from hibernations and sometimes we can also see that they are migrating at different times. That means the migration period of birds and mammals are affected. We can also see that their breeding pattern is also getting affected. So from the polar bear in the Arctic and the marine turtles of the African coast we can see the huge diversity of life that are available on our earth are at greater risk due to the climatic change. The next factor is poaching activities. Now what do you mean by poaching? Poaching means the illegal trade and trafficking of the animals. The animals are illegally hunted or killed so that they can be traded. What can be traded? Their skin, their teeth, Sometimes the, the, the bones, all this are used for trading purpose. So this illegal trading of animals, the trafficking of animals are referred as poaching, which is again a very important factor, which is leading to the extinction of natural vegetation and wildlife. So which are the factors that are causing extinction of wildlife and natural vegetation are deforestation, soil erosion, construction activities, forest fire, tsunami and landslides, climatic change due to increasing pollution and poaching activities. Now let us see how can we conserve the natural vegetation and the wildlife. Now let us know about the ways by which we can conserve the natural vegetation and wildlife. The first way by which we can conserve the natural vegetation and wildlife is by establishing national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves. All these three are natural area, the natural habitat of the animals and the plants where they are protected from any sort of disturbance. So what is a national park? A natural area designated to protect the ecological integrity of one or more ecosystems for the present and the future generations like the Jim Corbin National Park, the Kajiranga National Park, the Rajaji National Park. Like this there are different national parks which are established. What is a biosphere reserve? It is a series of protected areas linked through a global network intended to demonstrate the relationship between conservation and development. For example, the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. So the natural habitat of wildlife need to be protected and conserved from any sort of disturbances. And how this can be achieved? By establishing more number of national parks wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves. Next, we need to conserve the creeks, lakes and wetlands. These three are very important source or we, or we can say that they are diverse in ecosystems. What are wetlands? Wetland means areas of marshy, biologically diverse of all ecosystem. Wetlands are very productive. It is important to control flood in wetlands, different kinds of plants, fish, they grow, they live and they breed. Different migratory birds, they come to the wetlands during different seasons. So it is very important to conserve the creeks, lakes and wetlands so that we can conserve the plant life, we can conserve the aquatic marine life and this can be done by conserving the wetlands, lakes and creeks. So, Conservation of wetland is an important part in conservation of natural vegetation and wildlife. We need to encourage and establish more awareness programs like Ban Mahat Utsav. Now Ban Mahat Utsav is an annual tree planting program. Annual tree planting program.
which is celebrated in the first week of July, from 1st July to 1st July to 7th July. In this program, the school children are encouraged to plant more number of trees, that is afforestation, and they should be encouraged more at the regional and the community level so that the planting of trees, that is afforestation, should be practiced and the natural habitat of wildlife which has been destroyed can be again replenished back. The next way is by banning of killing and hunting of animals like lions, tigers, deers and great Indian busters. Let me tell you, these are the animals who are already in the verge of extinction or maybe they are endangered species. So it is very important to restrict killing and hunting of animals or the illegal trade of animals for the skin, bones or for their teeth so that they should be protected. The next way is by educating people. Now the people should be educated, should be encouraged about the importance of the ecosystem. Like the children, the school children, they should be encouraged to watch board. They should be taken to natural camps. They should be taken to botanical gardens so that they can understand about the diversity of plants and animal life that exist in our country, that exist in the whole earth. They can actually appreciate the varied habitat of different species. So it is very important to encourage the people to make them realize the duty of them towards protecting the plant life and the animal. The next way is the stricter rules of government. Government should frame strict rules and laws so that killing of animals, cutting down of forests should be restricted. As you know that according to the national forest policy, we do not have the desired amount of forest cover that has been set by the national forest policy. So what we need to do, we need to encourage the people, we need to make them realize that it is very important to have the forest cover. So that can be done only only by restricting cutting down of trees and it is possible by the stricter rules of the government. The next way is CITS. Now this is a very important step taken by the government. It is an international convention. What is CITS? CITS means the convention on international trade of endangered species of wild fauna and flora. So CITS means the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. This is an international convention or an international agreement that has been signed between the government. What is the aim of CITS? That is the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Its aim is to ensure that the trade of endangered species of animals and plants should not threaten their survival. Through this trade, around 5,000 species of animals and 28,000 species of plants are protected. So this is a very important step taken by the government. So how we can protect the wildlife and the natural vegetation, how we can conserve them by establishing national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves, by conserving creek, lake and wetlands, by the awareness programs like Banamad Utsaf, by restricting and banning the killing of animals, hunting of animals, educating people about importance of our ecosystem, stricter rules of government, and another way is an international convention, an international agreement which has been signed between the government, that is CITES. So what we learned in today's video, we learned about the factors which are responsible for the extinction of natural vegetation and wildlife. 
and the ways by which we can conserve the wildlife and natural vegetation. I hope all of you understood what you will do now. You will follow your NCRT. You will read in between the lines. You will follow the PDF and the notes which are provided in the description box below. You will also get the link of the part one of this topic and you can watch the video just by clicking the link. If you like my video, if you like my content, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and do press the bell icon for further notification of my videos. And if you have any problem or any suggestion, you can comment there in the comment box. Till then, stay safe, stay at your home. Thank you. Mm -hmm.